the emergence of all these kind of um, thinkings about system thinking or regenerative thinking, living systems thinking, is really something that emerged from us looking for uh, solutions for what is not working. And because I, I am, I think, really think that we are more mature as a societies, we are like um, at the moment of taking responsibilities about uh, what we are building. Lucia Hernandez is my guest on this episode of Inside Ideas, brought to you by 1.5 Media, Innovators Magazine, and the Alohas Regenerative Foundation. Lucia is an expert on platform-based business models. She has been around the collaborative economy for more than a decade. Later, platform economies helping organizations of all kinds in the adoption of these new models, bringing the platform mentally to the company and building a relationship of real guidance and support. She's been an advisor for Decathlon. She is also an expert evaluator of the European Commission under the H2020 program, professor at business schools such as ESADE and or ESADE, ESADE, and an international lecturer and speaker. She has participated in the design of public policies with the European Commission, the IDB, CIPPEC, and some local governments such as the Generalitat de Catalunya. And uh, she knows the ecosystem very well and what is happening internationally. Has a wide network of trusted international collaborators, and she is the president of We Share an international think and do tank that explores how the platform economy is impacting different sectors, markets, organizations, citizens, and society in general. As an independent consultant, she helps organizations in designing platform ecosystem strategies with Boundaryless, the company behind Platform Design Toolkit a methodology to help public and private organizations to design their business models from a platform ecosystem point of view. She was always exploring the design of regenerative ecosystems and network strategies to impact at scale, being part of an international forums and communities, connecting people, projects, and ideas. Luthia, welcome to Inside Ideas. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so great that you can make it. And, and uh, I just want to give our listeners a little heads up. Luthia and I know each other because she's contributing a wonderful portion to uh, a collaborative book, Menu B, that I've been working on for years now on uh, global food systems reformation. And she writes about regenerative uh, platform ecosystem models and, and how they affect our lives and how they're better models. And so that really leads me to, to my first question for to you and for you is, how did you get here? How did you get to this point, Luthia? So, well, as you said, I started with the collaborative economy 10 years ago. Uh, we saw this uh, movement as a way of really putting the center at the citizen in the production of value and self-organizing in communities under some kind of interest or values. And I was always interested in understanding how these platform business models uh, could uh, generate a positive impact in society and create a more fair um, yeah, societies in general for, for everyone. No? So because of that, it was for me, it was like an, a natural evolution finding or I was starting to, to listen this this work about a regeneration that we were talking that is obviously not new, but uh, for me it was. Uh, but uh, in any case, it's like a, it's supernatural for me. You know? It resonates a lot with me and it, don't, it doesn't seem like uh, something strange for me in any case. So it was because of that that I started to, to research about this uh, term, about this movement, about this kind of uh, designing 
is a mindset as well as the platforms. So I, I, I was trying to understand the intersections between platform design and uh, regenerative design in order to merge both and trying to really develop or design platform strategies for regeneration. That is the, the thing, the focus that I, that I have uh, at that moment. That's beautiful. I, I want to kind of go deeper and first also uh, ask you during this crazy time, this last two years, how have you been and have some new ideas or new things that you've seen in the past during this last two years of pandemic, crazy inauguration, you know, war in Ukraine, all these things going on in our world, given you any kind of impression that, wow, the systems or the models that are being used around the world are just not working for humanity anymore. And then maybe some aha moments to what you've done with platform models uh, in the past or says, wow, I, I feel like I'm in the right place in the right direction, so to say. So I want to know how have you been and, and what is your learning or what are the new things that have come to the surface with all the world crises and things going on that, that, are, that are learning lessons for you? Mm -hmm. So the sharing economy started really like uh, with a strongly need of uh, organizing ourselves, of uh, really change the way of uh, how we produce it and how we relate each other. So for me, it was very interesting in understanding that at, at the end it was like uh, the immunological system reacting to, to something that it was happening. So clearly institutions uh, that started that were war with, a, with a, a specific goal that it was to maybe to facilitate us or to generate trust in order to, to relate with, uh, with these uh, institutions and mutualizing for sure some kind of services for us, for citizens. But at one point, uh, of course, during the, the, the COVID uh, lockdowns, we realized that we that we can't for sure to, well, it was like the, the realization that the systems or the system, how is it at that moment is uh, really not working. And the, the most impacted ones, according to me, of course, it was uh, education and health, but the, the base of our societies. And it was like, um, well, we need to do something with that, no? So if we have the tools and we have the, the knowledge and the experience of, of how we can really uh, self-organize and coordinate value creation through this platform business model that is not a technology or just a technology because it's all also a tool, but is about all a mindset, how we can really create these communities of people under some kind of interests and values and coordinate among us in order to obtain what we need from each other. No? So the reality is that platforms uh, started also to, to, yeah, to, to develop the same capitalistic and extractive uh, business models. So each time that um, it started like a more um, communitarian, I would say, or more fair, business model, it was uh, another trend inside the platform economy that uh, was um, coming back to this idea of uh, more extractivist and, and commoditizing, no? commoditizing products and, and humans, commoditizing one side of the, of the marketplace. So um, at the beginning, it was the sharing economy. And when we realized that everything it was putting in the same um, back uh, because of um, because it wasn't like a very clear definition about what was the sharing economy that for me it was, it is still a, a kind of the powerful of this, uh, of this movement. But, uh, but the fact is that um, it started with the sharing economy, uh, a lot of companies started to use it as a, as a distribution channel and trying to get a piece of the pie. And then appeared uh, some platform cooperatives that it was like the reaction of the system in order to fight against uh, more capitalistic uh, platforms. But then it started with the gig economy that it was worse because at the end it was the commoditization of the producers. 
and, and because of that, uh, the reaction or the pattern that we are seeing is that uh, is emerging this creator economy that is coming also from the passion economy. That is basically, uh, if you have a passion, if you have a knowledge or experience or something that you can use or you can deliver in a, in a platform strategy or in a platform environment, you can generate incomes from what you know or you have the experience. Um, this is super relevant because there is like emerging a lot of applications and platforms in order to help you to run your own life, to run your own business. And, um, and this is super relevant because with the We3 and with the DAOs, we are seeing like how we are like uh, aggregating or yeah, I would say aggregating again, uh, people, these creators, eco economy producers, but at the end, all of us are creators. It's not that it's uh, just one part of the um, of the of the citizens. We are all creators. We all all have something that we can bring to the to the market. No, so and now uh, they are like uh, joining uh, communities built on uh, blockchain in these DAOs that are uh, community ownership with uh, shared governance and is as is uh, distributed as well or decentralized, but has other kind of uh, characteristics that are making easier and easier to communicate and to coordinate between us in order to achieve uh, some common goals. And, and it's very interesting no? because at the end it's agent focused uh, strategies. So the, the most important is to create the space that is the definition of platforms create the space for the in producers and consumers to interact and to transact between them, but about all to create value. I absolutely love that. And, and um, I, I have to, you, you threw out several different econ economic models or types that are out there. So um, we, we want to get into the depth and substance and we want to go deeper, but I want to kind of unpack a little bit more of um, the terminology to get people up to speed where we're going with some of this terminology so that they can be on the same wavelength. Really, we saw the emerging of this, um, the, you know, the World Wide Web was supposed to be decentralized and distributed for everyone kind of a, a, a thing. And then, and then we really got into after the internet was established, you know, a lot of um, file sharing, peer-to-peer -peer networks, Napster and, and um, many other ones that were, were out there. And the, the, the big push of peer-to-peer really was born. And again, another crisis. So around 2008, there was a global crisis. And a lot of people reacted, um, you know, with this creator with this gig economy and uh, started creating and self organizing and generating value, and what they could program code create to do. And uh, a lot of this kind of emerged. But in, in that process, you that you just described you mentioned numerous types of models numerous types of economies you know uh shared value uh, um gig economy and so on I, I want you to help us to understand and and where they're all going what what are, are all those one model are they all separate models is it one that we we should say, hey, I'm 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 living and breathing the gig economy. That's the economic model I'm working in. Or can you be working on the gig economy, on a regenerative economy, or circular economy at the same time? Or are are they all different? How do you understand that? And what do you see in this development? Kind of define some of these 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 terms that you threw out there to us so that we can understand them a little bit better and how that that process is now evolving. Yeah, so the, the, the macro term that we are using is platform economy. So all these um, businesses, communities, whatever, that are, um, that are using platform mindset and technology in order to coordinate value creation. 
this is the, the common thing be, between all of them. The only uh, the difference is that how is concentrated, I would say, the benefit captured by the by the platform. How is um, how is the ten, the, ten, the the percent or the ten percent that is captured by the platform itself, or how is distributed among the participants in the platform? So platform cooperativism is that. So it's community owned, and they share uh, the the governance, no decision making. In the case of the gig economy, is is the platform that is capturing most of the value, and the producer is a kind of um, commodity inside so it's the same that you are using or do you, you are taking an uber car or another so the, the, the driver is very little difference so they are not putting the focus on the producer they are putting the focus on commoditizing this kind of service the other way is the creator economy the creator economy is focused completely on the producer so and this is something that platforms do really well because they introduce this idea of having um, multiple um, producers serving personalized items, services to these consumers that are, are looking for something special, something that is that needs to fit with what they are looking for in price, time, um, for whatever. Um, so the focus is on the producer. If the focus is on the producer, they are like trying to empower them but at the beginning of the of the creator economy, that it was more about focused on content or influencer content generation economy, or this kind of um, environment or, or context, uh, it was like a repeating the same pattern of the most capitalistic platform. So uh, the YouTube, the Facebook, Twitter, and so on, trying to capture most of the value. So because of that, um, they started to use their own uh, applications, platforms, tools in general, in order to uh, run their own businesses on their own uh, rules. So, and because we have all these applications and platforms and tools, they can do it. This is the thing for me, no? that they can do it because the availability that we have of these, uh, of these, these tools. So it's also a part of, uh, and bundle, bundle, and bundle, bundle to bundle to bundle. You know, it's disaggregating, aggregating, disaggregating, aggregating, um, and this is a very interesting pattern because uh, we are at that moment in a moment of disaggregation, with a lot of um, applications or platforms and tools in order to help this uh, booming uh, creator economy in in helping them to generate incomes, and it's super interesting because uh, at the end. I am sure that is all is also a big opportunity on putting or setting the, the base, the rules of what we want to build. So if we need to create the new platforms for, for all these uh, creators or all these uh, Web3 um, uh, users, so, we can use it uh, the lens of regeneration in order to really to create a, a, a really really a change no on on how we how how we coordinate value creation and how it's impacting in our environment in our societies in general no so i think that this is something that system thinking and for sure living systems is bringing to to this idea it, it was it was the thing that i i was most interested in no in understanding how really um, nature uh, works or living system work in order to apply it as a lens for design regenerative uh, platforms uh, or platforms strategies for regeneration this is i think that the most interesting thing I, I really love that and that's that's why we initially connected so because i like your way of thinking and systems and how you use the the model of regeneration as the way that the world has really always worked and that it's one that can go on pretty much indefinitely. One thing that, that we've discussed before is that platforms are systemic uh, dynamic models. They're uh, the systems view approach to 
solving some of business and organization and life problems and issues and kind of a model for the world that have worked pretty well. And as you've mentioned, and, and uh, it's really in the uh, heavy in the gig economy and hardware and software and developers uh, use platforms a lot. And, and you know, as we know, um, uh, and you, you can tell us a little bit more about this as well, platforms, you know, are being used in, in, in the millions around the world. People are running or in, in the platform model system, um, uh, bound, boundaryless um, dot IO is basically uh, already got 70,000 people and organizations who are, who are using that, that model of platform model as well. It's something that really works well, and we can see it when when we get into these, you know, the World Wide Web and technology, where things are systems of systems, different plugins and apps, and and this uh, this way of, of looking at that. Um, but can you tell us a little bit more that that we might not know how how what are the real numbers in the world of of kind of people using this platform model? How many are using it effectively? How many are using it not effectively, kind of as a commodity, and 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 kind of where we sit today uh, in, in that aspect? Can you do you have some of those numbers? Yeah. So, well, platforms are very different between them. So we can compare uh, Amazon with uh, Apple or with Facebook or with uh, Airbnb. So they are very different in the way that uh, they operate. In any case, they are uh, they, the common thing is that they are using the platform like uh, the, the tool and also the mindset, creating this space for uh, the, the the producers and consumers to interact and designing for relationships, uh, putting the elements in order to generate trust in order for the interactions to happen because if there is no trust in the, in the ecosystem, uh, there, there, there are no, no interactions. And so I would say that there are something, some numbers uh, out there, no? talking about that seven of 10 uh, enterprises or companies are platforms, already platforms. No, I think that, uh, so I don't know if, if it was uh, Robin Chase from Tipcar that tell something, told something like uh, if, if everything that could be a platform will be a platform because it is a more efficient way of organizing value creation is more transparent because of the ratings that are people, bidirectional ratings, um, producers and consumer give in the, in the platform and they are more economic because once you have the structure, the infrastructure, uh, so the cost of uh, aggregating new uh, producers or new assets, whatever, in the platform is almost zero. And also uh, because they are using network effects, so more people using the platform is more valuable for everybody in the platform. So because they are leveraging on network effects, is more scalable. So um, yeah, I would say that. I don't know if everything will be a platform, but most of the business models out there will be a platform. So they run, the they run that, on no? that, yeah. There, uh, in Europe, I've heard numbers of 28 million people in Europe are working in the platform economy. And that, you know, that the, the uh, <clears throat> seven of the top 10 most valuable companies in the world are running a platform economy. Uh, I actually think, you know, globally, it's a, it's a lot more and people don't even know that's really kind of uh, what they're running and, and what they're on, because it's just a model that works. It's one that's almost autonomous. And if it's set up right, if it's applied correctly, it's one that addresses all the facets of a complex organization. And, and the reason I kind of ask about that is really is the systems view of life approach, is the systems dynamic modeling, the way uh, uh, the limits to growth wrote about it in 1972 and MIT came up with the systems dynamic modeling in the world model three at MIT, uh, Donella Meadows, Dennis Meadows, your Grander, Steve Behrens Jr. wrote the limits to growth and they were all uh, creators of this world model three that use systems dynamic modeling to kind of model our world. And so it's really um, platforms are uh, a systems dynamic model that's really been there for a while. We're calling it platforms. And 
it is very successful. It's very, um, it's a direction in the way that the world works in, in this uh, complexity science and, and system science. Um, but now we're throwing something much more powerful into the mix. And that is we, we've discussed regenerative ecosystem platform models. And so not only does it have this systemic and the system science in it inherently, now it's adding in the ecological phenomenon of symbiosis or regeneration. And so um, I, I, I've, maybe you can address or, or I can um, how long this has been around because, you know, I, the last five years, uh, I've been asked to speak on regeneration probably 20 or 30 times. And everybody seems to think when I, because I have a lot to do with agriculture and food, as you know, um, that I'm going to talk about regenerative agriculture. But I, I always talk about regenerative um, economies and regenerative models that have, have all the things that we're discussing here today in them. How, how is that evolving? How did you come to it? And can you explain it a little bit to us? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so yeah, I think that we are more mature as a society because uh, we can't or we think that we can't trust on institutions. We need to really to organize ourselves because we need to, because we want a new model or a um, regenerative model. So we, I think that the, the emergence of all these kind of um, thinkings about system thinking or regenerative thinking, living systems thinking is really, something that emerged from us looking for uh, solutions for what is not working. And because I, I am, I think, really think that we are more mature as a societies. We are like um, at the moment of taking responsibilities about uh, what we are building. So for sure that uh, more people uh, are, have more awareness about um, what we really or how we can include uh, nature and natural environments uh, in the equation of when, when we are building businesses, no? So, and all these people now is inside companies. So most of the people that connect uh, with me are people that are in the, at the same level of um, thinking looking for that kind of solutions. Maybe they, don't, they can't put it on words or they can uh, put labels on that, that I prefer not to put labels because when you put labels, you are like constraining the thing. But in any case, um, I think that uh, this is because um, we are like, uh, we, because we are more mature, we want to be adults in, in, in this adult year, we need to take responsibility of our ads, of our business, and then we are uh, really learning and, and how to do it. So yeah, I think I feel that it's like a more it's a very very organic and natural natural evolution. I've I've heard you say in the past that um, you you call it a second almost a second renaissance. And yeah, that, that's interesting because. Really, one of the first scientists, one of the first uh, artists, one of the first people to really write and talk and about regeneration was Leonardo uh, da Vinci. And what I've seen, and I mean, I have a big stack of books here. I, I, I mention books all the time on the podcast that talk about Fritz Hof Capra or talk about uh, that are written by Fritz Hof Capra or talk about um, uh different Italian authors, different um, Spanish authors, or that there's these cultures or communities that very much have this almost a Latin Renaissance or a Renaissance in general uh, of uh, where these things have been around for a long time. This is, this is not new. It's just, uh, it seems new. It seems like it's something that's trending and it's going beyond sustainability. It's going beyond ecosystem services is going beyond platform but it's really not especially since you say it's this second renaissance right 
So it kind of explained that to us to let us know or help us understand how this is not just a new thing, the new trend that we're jumping on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the the the, the Renaissance was uh, characterized by by that. No, it's, it was like a moment moment of uh, really of um, intellectual, cultural creativity, new ideas, um, putting in in question the, how the things work at at that moment. So we are like living at this second Renaissance. No, that uh, some creator economy exponents are. Are talking about and I am really really agree with that because uh, it's like a, we are living in this moment of creativity of uh, being uh, aware of that we are creators in this world and that um, that um, yeah and that we have the tools in order to to do it no so I think that is a moment a very interesting moment in story we are in the, as Liz Agensky, one of my friends and well thought leader, uh, she said something like, uh, we are in the moment of the not yet. We are in the moment of the no more and in the moment of the no yet. So we are in this, in this middle moment, but we are, I think that we are more close uh, to, the, um, to the not yet, no? And yeah, so we are creating, we are creating new things. We have the tools in order to, to have this autonomy to create. We can coordinate because we don't want to do it alone. And we are joining communities uh, with the same interest in order uh, to, to do new things or to create new things. That it was one of the reasons because of the collaborative economy or sharing economy in, in the United States um, was born, not because they, because people wanted to really to, to stay in community again, because it was really no, it, it was so isolated. I am I am a freelance, and and it's like a, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to create alone. I need my tribe, and I have my tribe in in Wisher, No, that is like um, yeah, the community that I joined thirty years ago, and and I'm still there like and now as the president of Wisher Spain because we are an, an, an organization that is distributed. We are an independent organization, a nonprofit at a thin tank and two tank. And we are a distributed community. We learned a lot about how to manage a, manage a, a distributed community that it was no easy at the beginning, how we can manage expectations, how we can create the space for everyone to show their potential how we took decisions, how, how we organized everything. And it was super interesting. We have a lot, uh, um, yeah, a lot of learnings about, about that. No? So I think that this is a, an interesting moment of the story. Well, I think it's really interesting because you, you educate organizations, corporations, and especially at the EU level on the age 2020, you're educating them on some new models, but there, there's kind of, there's two aspects in there that I'd like you to tell us about, which I, I, I really love because it gives me hope and, and, and this world of broken systems and kind of a dis-ease or un, uneasiness with some of the systems in, in the world. And the biggest one is really um, in government, in bureaucracy and, and organizations that are bureaucratic or in politics, where it's very bureaucratic or even in governance where the models, this regenerative platform model uh, is one that really gets you in into those barriers of, of entry. It disaggregates the market. And, um, and, you know, obviously the biggest one that's very complex is, is food systems. And so I, I would love, you know, to kind of, kind of hear about how this model really helps in those situations, especially um, uh, foundations, NGOs, those who are really trying to, to offer planetary services or make the world better in, in some respects for, for people and planet. And then also, if you, you, you touched earlier on DAOs, which are decentralized autonomous organizations. And, and that's also very similar to what you're just, you're just talking about, which is another form of model. Could you, can you, can you tell us a little bit about those positive experiences or how you talk to people about that and, and what, what's, what's emerging, what's coming out of that? Yeah. So the first thing is that, uh, yeah, at the beginning, it was more uh, like traditional companies trying to understand how to 
really move their industrial or more linear pipeline um, business models into a more ecosystemic or platform business models. No, it, it was at the beginning because now it's a ma mainstream platforms. Um, there are more governments or public institutions that are very interested in understanding how they can use it in order to to really to re gen generate a major impact, no, and and also to understand how they can keep being relevant in the market or in the in the society. Because if they are, if they can help us evolve, if they can't uh, really take care of us, that is not a question of taking care because I don't like uh, paternalisms um, in institutions, but in any case, they, I don't know what they are going, that, what is going to happen with them. So it's interesting because they are started to talk about platforms and about regeneration, about that and about, that. so it's, it's, it's it. So, so the, the thing is platforms uh, has, um, or, they really make, make sense in, in the more bureaucratic environments and also in the more fragmented ones. So if you have a ecosystem, people interacting in some way that they are, they are already doing something, you can think about whatever, no? Um, so what, what you want is really to facilitate them, no? to connect them, to create the space for producers and consumers to interact and creating some kind of mutualized services in order to help them to evolve. No? The, the platforms are really hotbeds of, um, of learning. So if you can focus on learning, so, and, and you, you need to ask you know, uh, yourself uh, how the system is learning. So if you can really um, go deeper on that and you can really design a space for learning, you have a very powerful space for the communities, for the producers and consumers to really to evolve and to um, using their capabilities for sure to find the place that they need in order to show their maximal poten maximum potential and their, their uniqueness. No? So yeah, public institutions have a real, they have a public, um, serve so they, they need to to really to serve to the to the citizens so um i would say that um yeah it makes a lot of sense to develop uh, platform strategies and more and more that they has uh, they have to be really regenerative uh, for for territories and because of that we talk about this idea of well the, the pandemic no that um we realize it that uh, we we can't uh, uh, we couldn't really to to trust on international uh, value chains, and it was uh, the the past week. Uh, Larry Finn, that is one of the CEOs of uh, BlackRock, uh, in his letter to the shareholders talking about uh, the the war the, of Russia against Ukraine um, is really is the end of uh, globalization. No? I think that. Uh, well, I think that they sell uh, very well this idea of globalization, but um, it's not working at all. And I think that we need to, to come back to, to this idea that, of course, ideas or like things could be globalized, but all production needs to be really done in the, in the place, no? So with this... Yeah, with, with this idea of you know how we can connect between each other in order to evolve our thinking and to learn from others and how we can really develop the strategies in the place in order to be more resilient, anti-fragile and so on and really regenerate uh, the, 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 the social tissue and the community tissues and, and this, uh, you know, regeneration is also creating it's this not... cascade. Yeah, it's not it's not just um, the U Ukraine war. It's also happened uh, in Brexit during COVID. So huge problems, supply chain, but everywhere has had uh, supply chain and uh, global trade issues during this time where people aren't working the jobs. They're not there to harvest the products. They're not there to, to run the ships. They're not there to do the things that are necessary. So I'm, I'm definitely glad you brought that up. And then the second, the second main reason, which you also brought up is 
we for too long have commoditized products, whether it's farm food, food, agriculture, or whether it's um, cars or computers or whatever it is, we're turning products and things into commodities and trading them uh, on the stock market. And, and it's basically a way to cheapen products, cheapen, and if you cheapen anything, whether it's food or, or a product, you're actually cheapening life because someone's being paid less, farmers making less money, the producers are making less money. That means people get lower wages or they go without insurance or they're working under slave labor conditions and things. When we turn things into commodities, it really hurts society as a whole. And, um, you know, one of the biggest examples is uh, in, in agriculture is the Brexit. The United Kingdom produces five times the size of the United Kingdom's its food elsewhere overseas. So five times the size of the United Kingdom is the amount of land that they use elsewhere to produce commodities that then get shipped to the United Kingdom for them to, to thrive and survive. And um, that's a model in times of pandemic, economic downturns, uh, that has a limit to growth and has an end, can cr crash. And we've seen the ripple effects of that there and all over the world. And that's, you know, that's just the two examples that Ukraine and, and the Brexit. And so I'm, I love that you address that. Um, just before we go further, I want you to maybe, if you don't mind, touch on the DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization, kind of what's emerging, what your thoughts or feelings are there on because that also can be a very regenerative model as well. It's just still emerging and being kind of how do we make that work? Because a lot of people are like, you know, they, they, they don't really know how, how that works or what your thoughts or feelings are there. But then I want to put you on the spot after that um, with really getting into the some core principles, if you don't mind departing some wisdom to us on what are some core principles that businesses and organizations can use around regenerative platforms. You know, there's some certain steps or things that sh they should be looking at, thinking about to move forward with this concept and you help them to do that. So I don't want you to give away all, all, all your wisdom but if you can kind of give us some guidelines as well after you talk about that, I'd appreciate it. Okay. So yeah, well, well th thinking about value chains, you know uh, very well that is very linear, right? So uh, we, we need to really to, th to start to thinking about value networks instead of uh, value chains and becoming or moving from this idea of linearity to uh, an idea of more circularity. So DAO, DAOs represent that. So uh, mm, there is for sure who is um, or a group of people or one individual that is creating the space for others to, uh, to create value. But um, the, the difference is that it's not more like the, the, this um, owner of the strategy or whatever, the person who developed the, the space uh, creating content or whatever inside the the, the community is everyone creating value. So, and I think that this is something I'm, I'm doing like uh, right now on, on a course on regenerative economics. And for sure, the most interesting, the most interesting thing is to connect with the other people in the ecosystem and trying to learn from each other and to develop new, new, new things. So the DAOs are doing that. So are creating the space in a more circular way for everyone create value in the ecosystem. So this is uh, super relevant. Um, yeah, and, and the, other, the other thing is that uh, what I'm seeing is that uh, for sure it's a super good tool. Uh, you know that uh, there is uh, also a very interesting uh, to think about how they are generating the trust in the, in the ecosystem because, uh, well, this is an idea of, uh, from Sangeet Shudari that is uh, one of the, um, yeah, the relevant thinkers about platform uh, platforms and yeah, platform ecosystems, and that uh, so in in the industrial era, you the, the trust was generated be, by the or because of the contracts, no, between the two parts, the two sides of the 
the, the enterprise and, and the consumer. In the case of the platform economy, it was more about the terms of services that uh, the platform needs to put uh, in order to really to, to manage the interactions between the entities and also to, uh, to solve conflicts or whatever. That is, I think that this, this is the uh, a more, more very interesting thing in order to understand how we can apply the regenerative lens. This needs to be included in the mission of the company. This needs to be included in these terms of service, what, how you are gonna um, develop your products and services. And, and it was also referred to reputation. And in the case of the DAOs, it's, it's more about uh, these protocols, the, 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 the software itself, but also the consensus model, how you are gonna um, create new, mm, new blocks in the, in, in the ecosystem and how, how it's gonna be that, no? And I think that there is the interesting thing, no? How you can add the lens of regeneration in order to really create something that is regenerative. The other thing is that, uh, and it's because I, I love this idea of merging uh, two worlds, that is, is about that the platform strategies are more about looking at the outside, looking at the ecosystem, what they are doing and how you can facilitate it, creating some kind of mutualized services in order to help that. In the case of the, um, uh, of the DAOs uh, or in the case of the regenerative economy is more about it's, an, it's, an, it's a, a movement or it's something that it needs to, to come or to emerge from the inside. So, you know, you can really create regenerative products or services if you are not regenerative inside your company. If you have or you are running a traditional company with the same silos, thinking about value chains and thinking about, uh, you know, or some kind of, Toxic, toxic environments, and because of that, we have this, the big resignation. Uh, if you are not really thinking about how you can create inside your company really the conditions for everyone or everything to thrive and to flourish, you are not going to be capable of creating products and services that are really regenerative. So it's a it's a virtual circle of inner and outer. No, so you learn and you iterate and you apply and you constantly. Uh, evolving no and because of that i would say that the most important principle in order to to apply a, a, a platform strategy for regeneration uh, it is holism is thinking about uh, about one system that uh, everything that you do on one part of the system is going to impact in the in the other part of the system in a positive way or in a negative way and this is the most dangerous one because there are a lot of diversity in how how can they evolve, and then the, 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 the this is the, the, the I would say the main the main principle, no, to think about as a one system as a whole, and and trying to be designed for the benefit of all the entities inside uh, the, the this ecosystem. I would say human and non-human stakeholders represented. So how you can include the voice of nature, the voice of heritage or the voice of whatever, you need to take into account that is uh, something that is uh, contributing, in, contributing in, your, in your ecosystem. The other is about potential, that this is something that our platforms de, de, do really well, that is uh, really thinking about how you can empower um, each of the entities in the ecosystem, in the ecosystem to show their uniqueness because of that, platforms like Etsy are uh, very relevant because you have a lot of creators, producers that are doing very interesting, beautiful things with their hands uh, and all, all them are personalized. I mean, there is no, no copy on, on that. No? I mean, there is no two, two things that are, that are the same. And so platforms are doing this very well, no? to leverage on the potential of the entities in the ecosystem in order to re generate re a really interesting uh, market for, for everyone. The other thing is that you need to intentionally design for development. So this is not something that uh, it happens, um, you know, as a, um, without not putting an, an effort on that. You need to really uh, design uh, for development because platforms are these uh, hotbeds of uh, learning, 
you can really create the spaces for them to connect. It could be through um, offline events, it could be through a chat, it could be through whatever you need to do, but the platforms that will be and are and will be more successful will be that that are, are really creating communities around them that they can learn from each other in a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. And um, yeah, I mean, and- I love it. I absolutely love it. That is so beautiful. And you also gave a, a, a wonderful TED talk uh, very much on, on, uh, on platforms and very similar. It was in Spanish though. So not all of us speak fluent fan, Spanish and, and uh, understood it. Can you, do you mind please summing that up a little bit for us and what some 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 other lessons are that you really wanted to convey in that TED talk and and bring across to to us all to kind of to know about platforms and regeneration? Yeah, so it was a form I I I have done a lot of conference and lectures and so on. But uh, the TED talk, it was uh, something really different because I was not talking that I am used to talk to um, CEOs or, you know, whatever, oh, people that are um, starting businesses and so on. Uh, it was more for the, for the citizens, no? And this was uh, difficult for me to understand how to really try to resonate with them. And what I did, it was like, it, for me, it was, it was like a very personal journey, developing the content for, for the content for the, for the tech, because it was like, uh, yeah, I, I, I wanted not to, because you know what, when, if you had started to talk about system thinking, living system theories or whatever, I mean, you need to use words that, that people can understand and can resonate with. So I, I wanted to go to my uh, to my personal experience when I I was uh, pregnant from for my first uh, baby. Uh, at what moment of the of this period I I I, I needed I, it was like something very strong need of uh, of taking care of everything no? of. of of uh, creating the space of, you know, and to painting the, the room, whatever I needed to do in order to really to create the space for the baby to, to evolve and, to, and, to, and to, to be well, no? So it was like a, my, my idea of, um, of how to, to really connect with this idea of regeneration, no? that is a, it's, it's taking care. And it's something that I think that res it resonates a lot with us. No? It's taking care of ourselves. It's taking care of the, of, of the people who is around, of our families, of our, our friends, are taking care of the environment. So if we really connect with, uh, with who we are, um, this is something intrinsic in, in us. So the thing is that we just need to remember, we have passed a long time in this linearity, in this isolated or silos, uh, whatever, and in, in with no contact with nature, no. So we we need to understand how to do it, or we need to learn how. Yeah, what is our role as a, yeah. as humans in this? Uh, oh, for me, new scenario, no. Uh, even it's not new, no. So, it's even about yeah. reconnecting. So how, how do we reconnect? You know, we've been disconnected from nature and our infrastructures or societies are kind of distanced from, from our planet and our environment in many respects. And, and so it's also, I guess, in that process of thinking about, you know, your baby coming and, and, and that you're, you're connecting back to what, what, what does a world that works for you uh, look like for your baby and so you wanted to make sure that you created that and I think that's that's something that we need to put into to our life as a model as well and so that really is great because it brings me to the hardest question that I have for you today I ask all my guests the same question and it really um I kind of ask it in, in in two ways one I always say that you know what's your answer to the burning question WTF? And it's not the swear word, it's what's the future. But there's a more interesting way to say it, which we've all been um, experiencing lately. And that is, 
what does a world that works for everyone look like for you? Yeah, well, I would say that it's very similar to some ideas of solar punk, that is uh, ecology mixed with uh, technology uh, serving humans in order to, to achieve uh, what we need to, to do to really to create a more collaborative society, one that is fair, where everyone could be or could uh, have health in any case, I mean, at any level. Um, and the one that we can treat uh, with respect life, because we are one more in this uh, web of life. So we really uh, need to, to design as everything matters. Absolutely love that. That is so beautiful, and it's it's um, it's so true. I'm I'm glad that you you shared that with us because um, if we don't have an understanding or a feeling what um, a world that works for everyone looks like, then we don't have a path. We don't have a model to to, to work towards. We don't. And, and we're kind of going to be taken by some of the models that we've had in, in the past or currently are operating on that are making us uneasy at the direction that our world is going with, with wars and, and, and other issues and problems. And so I really love that. And at the core, it's everything that we've talked about today and what you talk about is really it's a new model. It's a regenerative ecosystem platform <laughs> model. It's a, it's a better model for life, one that continues to work for everybody. Because everything you mentioned uh, is included in that model. It's the basic needs of humanity that we, we, we come back and we tell uh, and we agree with each other that we're never going to let humanity get below a certain level ever again that we're all part of this bigger family. And so I, I really, I really like that. And I love that you're empowering people and organizations around the world with your, your teachings and your uh, advocacy and your, and your um, consulting that you do to help them to make this shift. And I know it's not a process that will probably ever end, or you've reached your goal. It's one that's a process that keeps going over time. Um, that's a great thing about platforms and um, regenerative models. They're they're always evolving and growing and learning, and 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 the web gets stronger. And and in places where it might not be weak, then it's built up in other areas that are more important. And so I really like that open mindedness and and the tips and tricks that you've shared with us here today. Um, I have three more questions for you before I'm done. And, and that is really, where do you see your evolution going in the evolution along with these regenerative platforms? What do you see um, before the end of this year? And what do you see before December 2030 uh, when we're supposed to reach the Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals? What's your hope? What's your vision? What will you be working on? And what can we expect to see on the horizon? Yeah, what I'm I'm working hard uh, at that moment is, is to really to create some kind of framework in order to help um, whoever is interested uh, about all um, companies or enterprises that have a, a platform uh, wants to really to include some like, the lens of regeneration and the ones that have regenerative projects that want to uh, become or how to or understand how to really to create a, a platform strategy. So because I think that there are like these two worlds. Sometimes when, when you are in a more um, social innovation environment, uh, I don't know, I, it's, it's not a general thing, but I, uh, I would say that they are not very used to technology. 
So what I what I want to bring is that no some kind of uh, new ideas or ideas or this this mindset in order to help them to to really to leverage on on platform strategies to to scale their impact. So in a in a community ownership um, uh, way of thinking. No? So my idea is to work on this framework. I am working hard hard on that. And yeah, and I would say that I I I, I am a learner, and and it's, it's my position in front of that. Um, I would say that I'm trying also to connect with my with whatever is my ancient uh, wisdom in order to to really to generate something that is that is honest. That is not something that uh, is gonna be or well. People could use it as as they want, but uh, but uh, but my my mission is is really to to build the capabilities inside these uh, these organizations in order for for them to 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 think uh, by themselves no? and to to change the way they they see or they look at uh, at at the world. That's great. What have you experienced or learned in your professional journey so far that you would have loved to know from the start? Wow. I learn every day. <laughs> so it's very difficult for me to say <laughs> if I were, you know, I don't know. I'm I'm I I, I am a very extreme curiosity person. So I'm always uh, trying to learn new things. So for me it's like the infinite, no? And it's because of that that regeneration also is something that resonates a lot with me because I uh, it's, it's not like the goal, no? It's like uh, it's more uh, the, the journey that you are starting and, and that step by step you are understanding more and more how you can uh, be regenerative or who can, you can embrace regeneration. But uh, because of that, I, 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 what I'm doing is trying to really to enjoy the, the journey, not to look at the... Um, at the final, at the final, whatever goal. Thank you so much for letting us inside of your ideas. It's been a sheer pleasure. And unless you have some questions for me, or there's anything we forgot to discuss, uh, I really appreciate your time, and I look forward to. Uh, working with you more in the future, and, and the release of Menu B because your contribution is is fabulous. And I think a lot of people will really like it and, and um, be able to see how, how uh, it can apply into their business models, whether they're a farmer, a food producer, or, or, or whether they're uh, used to be a, a commodity trader that they can see a model that works better for the world and for them. Thank you very much, uh, really, Mark, for inviting me um, yeah, for, and for creating the space for to share and to to contribute to to this uh, this new change of paradigm that we we need to. You're most welcome. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Bye bye.